Hello, my name is Dr. Rob Patrawala, and I am a cardiac electrophysiologist, which means I specialize in heart rhythm abnormalities. I am a member of the group Silicon Valley Cardiology, and there are five cardiac electrophysiologists in our group. This is the third in a series of five videos which have been designed to help you understand our atrial fibrillation ablation program. This particular video will focus on what to expect on the day of your ablation procedure. Before the procedure, if you are traveling from a far distance, we generally recommend that you come up and stay locally the night before the procedure. You will be given an admit time the morning of the procedure. We generally have patients come fairly early in the morning. Once you get here, you will be greeted by a nurse. The nurse will place an IV in your arm and draw some blood work for initial laboratories. Feel free to bring some reading material or music because sometimes there can be a significant wait between when you get here and when the procedure actually starts. So when it's time for the procedure, you will be taken to our electrophysiology procedure room. There you will meet our staff and in particular, you will meet our anesthesiologist. The anesthesiologist will go over your history, ask you a few questions, and this is the time that you really want to mention any problems that you might have had with general anesthesia in the past. All patients are under general anesthesia during this procedure. It is the goal of the anesthesiologist to make sure that you are comfortable and safe during this procedure. This is a model of a heart, and the nice thing about this model is that we can open it up and show the internal structures of the heart. The heart has four chambers to it. It has two bottom chambers called ventricles, and it has two upper chambers called atrium. This is the right atrium and the left atrium. In the majority of patients, AFib comes from the left atrium of the heart, which is the left upper chamber of the heart. The heart muscle tissue in this chamber, and specifically the cells and tissue that are in the back part of this chamber around structures that are called pulmonary veins are the problem. These muscle cells have gone rogue and are sending out aberrant electrical signals that make your heart rate beat fast and irregular, causing symptoms. The goal of this procedure is to ablate and destroy those rogue cells and tissue so that they no longer cause you problems. This non-surgical procedure generally takes two hours or less. Once you are asleep, we place catheters into the heart from a vein in the right leg. Patients often ask me two questions about this process. The first is, how do we know where we are inside the heart? And what exactly is ablation? There are four technologies that we use simultaneously to determine our location inside the heart. The first is called fluoroscopy, which is real-time x-ray. This allows us to see our catheters moving inside the silhouette of the heart. The second is called intracardiac ultrasound, which is a sound wave image created from a catheter inside the heart. This allows us to see cardiac structures in real time inside the heart and more specifically helps us to cross between the two upper chambers of the heart. The third technology is called electroanatomic mapping. This is a GPS-like navigation system which allows us to visualize the movement of our catheters inside of the heart with an accuracy within millimeters. We rely on this technology quite heavily as it helps to not only know exactly where we are in the heart, but also has memory for where we have been and helps us to minimize radiation associated with fluoroscopy. Finally, the fourth technology we use is electrical recordings from the inside of your heart. The catheters we use have electrodes at the tips, which record the electrical activity of the exact spot we are in the heart and display this information on a computer screen. To our trained eyes, the pattern of these signals helps us to determine where we are inside of the heart and whether that particular heart tissue is healthy or diseased and needs ablation. There are several catheters we place into the heart but there are two main ones which are the workhorse of this procedure. This is the ablation catheter. It is deflectible so that we can move it inside the heart and get to where we need to be. This tip is the electrode which delivers the heat which destroys the rogue cells. The tip sprays cold saline water 
to keep the tip clean and free from overheating during ablation. The second catheter is called a circular mapping catheter. This is the one that records the electrical activity and displays it on a computer screen, helping to guide us exactly where to ablate. This animation helps to illustrate the ablation process. After the procedure, you will go to a recovery room for approximately two hours. We will make sure to let your family or friends or whoever you came with know that you're doing fine. We will also let you know that you are doing fine and that the procedure went well, but patients often don't remember these early conversations because of the lingering effects of anesthesia. The morning after the procedure, we will make sure to go over the results of the procedure with you in detail, your new medication list, and your activity restrictions for the first week. So this brings us to the end of this segment. I hope that this video helps you to understand a little bit about what to expect on the day of your ablation procedure. Our goal is to provide you with the safest, most effective experience. Thank you.